Uh, hi everyone, welcome to uh, a very exciting, um, sort of different episode of Chatting Cinema. I'm Flynn. I'm Gianni. Uh, and we're joined by a guest, uh, Mauricio of Brown Table. Yes, hello, that is me, Mauricio of Brown Table. <laughs> so, nice uh, to meet you. <laughs> nice to meet you too. Yeah. Very excited to have you on, we're really appreciative. Yeah, I've been a huge fan of your channel since before we even started this podcast. Uh, you're really inspiring stuff. And Thank you, thank you, I appreciate yeah. it. Um, I guess we didn't really know how exactly we were going to start this off. It doesn't have to be super structured, but I guess I wanted to ask you about your process. Like when you come up with ideas for videos, uh, how you write your scripts, how long it usually takes, uh, just your, your process. Well, let me take you back to the year <laughs> of 2016. Um, you know, it's, it's hard. It's, uh, it's always been a, a difficult process, uh, because, you know, when you start, you start doing videos because, you know, you enjoy doing videos and it's like, oh man, it's so fun and I want to talk about this and I want to talk about this. But once you start really getting into it as like a business end as well, um, it can't only be something for passion. It also has to be like your livelihood. Yeah. And so once it starts becoming that, you have to start realizing like, oh, I can't just sit around and not do a video until something like inspires me. Mm. So I have to actively go out and seek for things that inspire me to then make videos of them um <clears throat> and i think um that process is is pretty difficult sometimes because yeah. you know sometimes you just want to you know, like sit around and just like watch tv you know yeah. um and then uh, i think um on, on twitter Lindsay ellis tweeted uh you know when you uh you know it's one of those things when it's like a profession that you watch something or you're doing something and then in the back of your mind you're thinking so how can i apply this to you know my youtube channel or like business or something right. so you're not like just wasting time you know mm. and uh i mean that's a good thing and a bad thing but um for me it's it's uh it's 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 fun it's even if like i'm trying if if i'm not inspired by something uh it's still fun to like seek things out to be inspired and uh yeah, it's it's there's no there's no like, you know, set guide to, you know, uh, doing everything like this. But uh, for sure, it's one of those things. And it's always been a been a process that you have to kind of, you know, work through. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, primarily your channel is at least as of late, it's been video essays and such about, you know, films um, and, and going back. I was looking back at your kind of your channel history and it hasn't always been that. So mm. when did you decide to kind of make that switch? So my channel started, I think, the year 2014. And I think I set it for, like, you know, resumes and stuff uh, that it officially, like, started in 2015. Mm. Because 2014, I started doing uh, fan-made, like, music videos or tributes and stuff like that. I know right. it sounds ridiculous, but um, no, at the time, you know, I was, like, 15 at the time. So You're right. a good singer, by I the liked... way. <laughs> I'm sorry, what? You're a good singer, by the way. You can really sing. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Oh, my God. You've seen that. I have. <laughs> um, so at the beginning, I started doing, a, like I said, a tributes and uh, fan-made trailers. So it was uh, my first ever video in the channel, which has now been deleted. I don't know if it even exists anymore, sadly. Is this um, Red vs. Blue tribute video. At the time, I was really into Rooster Teeth, so that was one of those things. <laughs> and then as I kind of kept going... Um, because my dad was the one that told me to to keep to do the YouTube channel, not like do the YouTube channel. It's like I was doing things, but I wasn't posting anything. And he's like, "Why don't you just post it, kid?" Yeah. And I was like, "Oh, you're, you're right." <laughs> so, I decided to post my stuff, and that's when I realized, "Oh, this is kind of fun, and it's getting like actual reception, so that's cool." And you know, when I said like you have to look for things that you're actively inspired by, so. One thing I was inspired by is film. I just I really enjoy film. And I love like animated shows and films as well. But at the time, I was really into superhero stuff, and I still am. And so I was like, yeah, I kind of want to talk about like superhero stuff and like movies I watch and stuff. And I was I started progressing through my taste started changing, and I was looking at you know Chris Stuckman and all these people. And so I was like, yeah, I, I might as well just like you know just dabble in a dabble in a review, you know. And yeah, so I decided. Yeah. Okay, uh, Ant Man's coming out. Let's make an Ant Man <laughs> review. And so that's my first ever review on the channel. It's the cringiest thing you will <laughs> ever see because it's like the first thing I've ever done. It's the first time I ever recorded myself in front of a camera, and I'm very I'm not photogenic at all. Like I hate uh, <laughs> people taking pictures of me most of the time. 
most of the time. So it's like um, uh, it was really weird, and I didn't know how to react. So I was kind of like, oh my god, and I was so young <laughs> that yeah. I pitch shifted my voice like one decibel down <laughs> to sound older. That's oh, how really? cringe. Wow, this is crazy. Yeah. Um, and uh, that was my first video, and when I realized at that point that, oh, this is the, because this still happens even back then at the time, it's like, oh, this is like one video that isn't set as like this, this video is a copyright claim. But that was because, you know, I didn't use anything mm -hmm. from anywhere. You know, it was, I, I think I only used still pictures. Okay. Um, and so I was like, oh crap. So that, that means I can actually make money off this video. And that's when I started discovering that I can actually make money off the videos I'm making. And then I was like, oh, my whole world exploded because right. it's like, yeah, this is awesome. I have only 1,000 subscribers, but I can make money <laughs> yeah. off those subscribers. That's so cool. And um, that's when it, – it, it's a really cool feeling when you enjoy doing something and you can actually like make that your livelihood. I think that's a really fun thing. And it's always hard. It's still hard yeah, to this sure. day. Like. Uh, January has been a terrible I think it's a dry spell month for like most creators yeah um, most of the time like I think last year it was surprisingly a decent month for me but this month has been like oof, really hurting me <laughs> um, that's why sponsors are great uh, so you know whenever you get a um, whenever if you ever get an email which I hope you do and I'm pretty sure you will if you keep going at this trajectory <laughs> Um, you know, sponsors, they, they'll come out of nowhere. It's going to be really weird at first because sometimes it's not, you know, the big ones or anything. So I think my first sponsor was like Amino or something. And I didn't even know what that was. I thought that was maybe like a, like a, like a Trojan app or something. And I was right, like, right, right. <laughs> and then, uh, you know, it was a real thing. Wait, and so, you know, it's funny. Speaking of sponsors, I actually, yeah. I got a Ridge wallet because of your really? videos. You? Yeah. Oh, you did? I did. No yeah. way. Yeah. Oh man, Ridge better call me back. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> it's wow. Effective. How are you liking it? It's actually really cool. I, I use it. it too. Yeah, I love how thin it is. It's like yeah. it's great. Yeah. I think the only downside and it's been a while since I made the video, so I think Rich Ridge will be fine with it. You're safe. You can't hold change. Yeah. Mm. It's like kind of frustrating to me. But you know, other than that, I think it's really sleek. I also I will say sometimes I do struggle to get my cards out. But <laughs> Yeah. Oh yeah, it's tough. But it's like all in an effort to look cool, man. So yeah, yeah. you gotta get <laughs> it. It's so for the brand. Like, it's for the brand, man. <clears throat> um, so something that, that you were talking about earlier, like uh dealing with school and, and work and everything. Uh and again like going back into the fact that it's your livelihood and and you need to look for things to be inspired by what's it like trying to find that that sort of balance where maybe not even setting like a rigid schedule but determining like i know i have to film this that day or you know make sure i have enough time to figure out something to make a video about and then make that video um yeah so <laughs> um well you have like um a university sweater or something. I'm guessing mm. you go to university. Yeah, so yeah. Um, you will understand immediately, like, it's hard. You know, you yeah. have so many things to do. And uh, so for me in high school, you know, even that was hard. I I think at the beginning, high school was harder than college because okay. in high school, yeah, because in high school, I have multiple classes because it was um, one of these specialized colleges for design. And so, like, half of the classes were, you know, the usual math, science, and uh, social classes, mm. which were hard art on, on their own. And then I had the art classes, and it was, like, two fine art classes and one design and one design class, I think. Yeah, it was um, one fine art, one illustration, and then one design. And mine was industrial design. And so it's, like, all of this homework mm -hmm. just drowns you. I have no idea now thinking about it how I survived high school. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but it was a it was a lot of work, man. Um, but what was good is that at the time I was kind of relatively small, so I didn't really need to pump out content constantly. Mm -hmm. And it also wasn't my livelihood. Right. And so going into college, um, you know, like you're saying, with time, it was really hard because even moving, because uh, I moved from one state to another to get to to my uh, college and so the process of doing that it's basically like three months without internet mm. and so 
from I think like maybe J- July, August around there to like September um, in the year. When, when, it's got to be like what, 20, 2018 or 2017 around there. Mm-hmm. I wasn't making videos like at all. And I had already made pre-made videos to uh-huh. release during those times because I had to come up with a, the, the way to organize my time and be efficient with it and realize I had to also realize that I'm not going to be able to make videos because I'm going to be moving and that's set up my computer. But then it's like I don't have Wi-Fi. Right. And so even sometimes when I had I had made a new video, I had to go to the public library, which does have Wi-Fi to mm-hmm. then upload from the public library and it was such a such a mess man uh and you know even now again like uh with college you know that college life is insane yeah and so you have to deal with like social life uh your work your your classwork and stuff um i I, at the moment have thesis to do so that's like a lot of work and then you know youtube and what sucks is that i have youtube that gets me money and then I have college, and that drains me money. Right, so I'm right. left with nothing. So yeah. it's it's a, it's one of those situations. Um, so for finding time, that was a long ass ramble. I'm sorry. No, <laughs> but no. uh, for finding time, it's a. Uh, this is gonna sound really ridiculous, but I just wing it most of the time. I'm like, okay, I have time. I'm just gonna do it. Um, I think maybe it, it feels like I wing it, but to maybe outside people it would it might seem like oh i'm actually being responsible and the reason why is because most of the time i'm always working and that might be a good and a bad thing yeah but i'm like always working on stuff and so even in class uh and you you, you know those classes that are like whatever you know what yeah, i mean yeah. so during those classes i'm like on my laptop and i'm just drawing out storyboards for the animated series i'm working on right and um Sometimes, uh, like last uh, last year, I started uh, typing out my essays during uh, breaks and stuff so I could actually just go home and instantly record it. So that's just me regularly. Uh, that's not me like, oh, really trying to like manage my time. So right. for me, it, it feels like winging it, but I guess it's kind of just like how I'm used to or like like how my life is set up now. Like, oh, I'm always constantly thinking about work. That's not like because I have to. It's because like I enjoy doing it, yeah. and it's really not a deal for me. Yeah. Um, but I guess two outside people would be like, "Yo, this guy is like insane. Like, <laughs> could he ever stop, dude? Does he ever talk to people?" You know, so, um, it's one of those things. Um, but it's fun. It's a. It's always fun if you enjoy what you do. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So, so earlier you were talking about like the process of content creation and how sometimes it is a little dictated by what's popular and what people want to see um so yeah. i guess my question is how much of your channel would you say is is dictated by what you think is popular and what will get seen and what you really really are passionate about and want to talk about so what's great um and i'm very happy this is the case is that a lot of the things that um I a lot of the con no what is it? how do I say this a lot of the videos I make what it what they're about like maybe half of them are based on like what's popular at the time but what's great is that I also enjoy what's popular at the time sure. so it's actually not a not a big problem for me hmm. but it is one of those things where sometimes you just want to make a video on stuff that's like super niche and like nobody knows you know or something that people do know but like you don't post about it on your channel because that's like your target audience isn't really would probably not be interested in that or invested in that Uh, that's my my issue with anime and it's like i really enjoy it um but my channel is mostly, you know, film geared and like mm-hmm. uh, superhero themed geared. So it's one of those things. And so at, at the end of the day, I just kind of go like, you know what? This is my channel, man. I'm just going to do what I want because I enjoy it, you know? And so I just do it. And, you know, lo and behold, sometimes they actually bop and sometimes they yeah. fail, you know? But I made it. I put it out there. I'm proud of it. And uh, if it gets me new subscribers and a new new audience, um, that's great. I mean, that's awesome. Sure. And so that's what I'm trying actually to, to push now. Yeah. A little bit because 
especially now considering that like again I, I was mentioning I'm making the the animated series which is based on like um, an anime aesthetic if I make videos that are anime oriented then I might get a bigger audience to then watch uh, the anime I'm working on you know? right sure. yeah, and, yeah, um, sure. yeah it's like you know it's that sounds like really like oh my god I'm gonna I'm gonna make these videos so I can attract <laughs> people and then they'll watch my stuff you know but <laughs> right. um it, it sounds like malicious almost, but it's like it's one of those things where you just have to like think about it in like a like a purely business mindset right. because yeah. you're not doing it for like like you don't have bad intentions. You're yeah. like, oh, I'm passionate about anime, so I'll make you know anime videos just like I make film videos, same thing. And then I'm very proud of the work I'm doing, so I'm sure these people will enjoy the work I'm doing. I'm just right. trying to cultivate an audience here, right. and so it's one of those tough things where it's like, am I really doing this for you know the audience or is it like just like oh i want to get more people to watch this thing but it, it always kind of goes hand in hand you know mm -hmm. because if you're proud of what you do and you enjoy what you do i keep saying the same thing like oh you enjoy it, but it's very important yeah. um then you know it w shouldn't really be a problem yeah you know? definitely and uh, yeah so again back to your question i'm sorry mm -hmm. uh so what percentage is like based on you know what's popular and what's like based on what i like it's mostly like 50 50 it's a good 50 50 maybe more skewed towards what's popular at the time right. but thankfully what you know is popular at the time is uh stuff that i enjoy so it's not really that big of a deal yeah right i mean i can't speak for the entirety of your fan base and following but i think like similar to guys like high top films and loverboy media houston i mean I would watch anything that you guys put out. And I think that's because we come back to your personality and your unique mm. input on whatever it is that you're talking about. Like, And a good example of that is your tall girl video. I <laughs> I still laugh yeah. about it like every day because all of your videos are so funny to me, like your yeah. skits. So like, that's something that I probably never would have watched. And then I, I did end up watching it because of, you know, like you and the Cosmonauts video. So, mm. but... Yeah, so I think that's something that people do show up for is just you, you know, not necessarily yeah. what Thank you're you, doing. Yeah, yeah, sure. Sure. And and just the idea of like responding to passion, you know, like being able to to see authenticity and see something that a creator authentically loves and talking about it. I think there's always room for that and an audience for that. Yeah. Mm. So, I'm getting back to uh I mean, you, you, you love film and we do as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, your channel's about it. We're about it. <laughs> um, what did you think of 2020, uh, 2019? <laughs> yeah. Oh, 2019 was, yeah. uh, was really, honestly, one of the best years for film. I think yeah. it was fantastic. Yeah. Honestly, I still have to, I still feel bad about it. Oh my God. But I need to watch little women, man. It's, uh, yeah. it, I, I had a, I had, it's like this choice between watching little women or watching 1917, but with my family, because right. I watched it alone. Uh, no, I'm sorry, not 1917, Knives Out. Okay. Um, there's so many good films, you see them yeah, getting mixed yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so um, I decided, okay, I'll, I'll just watch Knives Out again with my family. Um, there were way too many good movies, man. Um, For sure. People, there's also like, you know, well, Parasite won Best Picture at yeah. the Oscars, which is well, well deserved. Yeah. Um, yeah, very exciting. And then, yeah, it was fantastic. And then, you know, Jojo Rabbit was great. Yeah. And, um, one thing is that when I went to see, uh, also 1917 was great. Everything was great. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah. when I went to see Knives Out, uh, the first time it was, it was really frustrating because, um, during my theater experience, and this is great because, you know, you love theaters and you just mm. get to be with people. And like, if they laugh, you kind of laugh too. And if they're freaked out, you're kind of freaked out. It's kind of like this, you know, almost, um, community experience, right. even though it's kind of like just you focused on this thing. But sometimes it can be bad, you know? Yes. Yeah. And so <laughs> I, there was a, this dude in my theater when I was in Knives Out who, you know, you in these theaters, uh, it was AMC, so you select your seats. Mm -hmm. um, and so the dude kept like shuffling in between like different people's seats in the back of me. And every <laughs> time he did so to try to get a good spot to sit, he would like kept knocking at my, my, oh. my, my back because I was in front of him. And then eventually, the person he stole his, uh, the seat from was like, "Hey, that's my seat." Right. And this dude was like, "No, it's not." It's like, "Yeah, it is. I <laughs> I paid for that seat." And he's like, "Man, you know what? 
my old seat was better anyway. And so he went over and he shoved my chair again and he went back to his old seat. Oh and then, God. like, during the movie, this lady next to me started vaping, oh, huh. which is insane. Yeah. It, it threw me back to uh, when I watched, I think, X-Men Origins Wolverine when I was 10. <laughs> um, someone was also vaping or smoking during that movie, and you could see the smoke kind of billow out on the screen. It was really ridiculous. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so don't be that person guys. Yeah. (laughs) But, um, so, you know, this person, uh, this lady kept smoking, uh, her vape, her vaping, her vape. Mm -hmm. And so the, the dude came up and was like, Hey, look, I have asthma. So you need to stop vaping right now. And the lady was like, Oh, I'm sorry. He's like, all right, right now. Okay. Thank you, please. (laughs) So he kept down and sat back. Everything was good. The lady, for some reason, kept moving, and she was acting really <laughs> suspicious. So I don't actually like blame the dude, but also the dude needed to chill. Because mm-hmm. like during the movie, you've seen it, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah, we both have. So when Chris Evans appears, and I'm like, oh hell yeah, Chris Evans, this yeah. is great. So he appears for the first time, and he's talking to the family. They have this great banter, which I finally got all of uh, during my second viewing. But mm-hmm. during the first viewing, I couldn't hear any of it because the lady was like rustling through her bag or something, oh and the dude came back and he was like listen <laughs> i told you the first time to stop vaping and so she's like well, i'm not vaping i'm not vaping he's like i saw you vaping woman i need you to stop or i'm going to yell he was already yelling i'm right. going to yeah. yell so loud that you're gonna have to give everybody's money back and was, I, I, at this point i'm like this guy's gonna this guy's gonna shoot up this entire theater yeah, oh my God. i'm gonna die here yeah <laughs> so, so it was really terrifying because the guy was like genuinely tall um, very ragged looking and so I was like yeah this uh, this is not going to end well and so wow. they they entered a screaming match for a good minute like a straight up minute Jeez. because I didn't I missed like a whole minute of this film and I had to cover one of my ears and eventually the dude finally sat down and then the lady next to me was just like I'm, I'm guessing traumatized because mm-hmm. she had no idea what the hell is happening and I'm just like sitting here like I, I just missed an entire minute of this Ryan Johnson film. Right, I love Ryan right. Johnson. I believe this. And uh, that's just one of my many terrible movie going <laughs> experiences. But that was probably one of the worst ones, yeah. if not the worst one. Especially in a yeah. movie like Knives Out, where everything is so precise and like meticulously planned. Exactly. It's like the plot, you have to listen to every little yeah. thing. Cause, you know, it's a murder mystery, so you might miss something. Right. So it's one of those things. Yeah. That's crazy. What was your favorite movie of 2019? Did you have it narrowed down? Oof, I don't know. Because we had that's, we that's, mm-hmm. uh-huh. we each did an episode um, where we talked about like our our top ten or top five oh, yeah? in 2019. Yeah, top three. I um I picked Ford v Ferrari. Um, I okay. adored that movie. Did you see it? I've not seen that one. Oh man. Yeah, you need to see that one. It sucks, man. It's like that college life kills yeah. me, man. Yeah, you know you're sure. right. And 2019, but like we were saying, it's such a good year for movies. One of my absolute favorite in in recent years. Um, I picked The Lighthouse, but uh, Parasite was right there as like a, a 1A, 1B type thing. Gotcha. Yeah. I think Parasite for me is like, it's just, it's just so great. And, yeah. I'm, I'm, and also um, the director, you know, he did Snowpiercer, right. which is also one of my favorite movies just ever. Yeah. Um, so... I'm just really happy that that's how it ended up. And it's really shocking to see. Well, it's not shocking. It's kind of like, oh, well, of course, you know, the reaction from all these people. Like, how could a foreign film win Best Picture? Right. That's ridiculous. And it's like, oh, come on. Man. Even but, though, like, the front runner was 1917 and it was British. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it would exactly. technically still be a, a foreign film winning. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And that's, that's you realize, right, that it's like, oh, they haven't watched these movies. Right. Yeah, yeah um, absolutely. So, yeah. And I think what sucks is that, you know, for me personally, it's like when people talk about movies and they haven't seen it. Yes. Yeah. You know, but they have like an opinion on it. Right. But that's like you can have an opinion on something that's like it's very vague and it's based on trailers, but you can't right. say, yo, this movie was terrible. Yeah. If you haven't seen it, you know, it's what it's ridiculous to me. Like um, Birds of Prey recently getting a lot of flack yeah. from people who haven't seen it. And, you know, you know, people haven't seen it. Yes. Because yeah. it hasn't made that much money. Right, right, uh, yeah, for sure. You have, like, movies like Joker, who, from people I know, you know, uh, a lot of people liked it. But my teacher, 
at school. Uh, he was not a film teacher, thank God. Mm -hmm. um, he was like, yo, this movie's terrible. It's bad. And he hadn't seen it. And it's like, how can you how can you have an opinion on it if yeah. you haven't seen it, man? So that's yeah, that's kind of bother me. It, uh, it's bothersome. Yeah. To yeah. me. That was you know, the, what can you do? Yeah, it was definitely frustrating seeing those those kinds of takes after Parasite one, because I know for me, like I, I watched Parasite uh, a few months ago, probably. Um, and after it won, I was like so inspired by by Bong and like so excited to, to go out. And I just like the past couple of days have watched like the rest of his work. Um, and so for me, that opened up like a whole like new like phase of cinema that I, I wasn't oh, like yeah. opening up myself to um and you know now like Bong Joon-ho rates it like the top of my favorite directors so like <laughs> I think that the the value of something like that of Parasite winning best picture not only mm -hmm. because that means like a bunch more people are going to see Parasite that otherwise wouldn't have but also just like opening up a, a different world of film um yeah, is so sure. valuable to me yeah it's ridiculous to me though because it's like um you have like Amazon people. <laughs> you see those Amazon reviews. It's like terrible movie, yeah. <laughs> right? Not English. Had subtitles. It's right. like in in Amazon Prime, it literally says English subtitled. Yeah. So I, I don't know how you miss that. It's ridiculous. But, I I saw an yeah, Amazon yeah, review on it. Twitter that was huh? like I saw an Amazon review of Parasite on Twitter that was like turned it off immediately. It was all in Chinese, and I was like, oh, that's a problem for yeah, a number yeah, of yeah, reasons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh my god, it's ridiculous, man. Man, we uh, we yeah, were talking about a, movie theater. You're we talking about movie theater experiences, and we actually mm. we both worked at a movie theater did, in high yeah. school mm. together. And I remember it was the premiere weekend of Crazy Rich Asians, which is a film okay. I, I adore. Right. Um, and this guy comes out and he's like, "Is that movie in English?" And I'm like, "It should be. Parts of it may not be." And he was like, "Well, I can't understand what they're saying." And I'm like, "Well, there's uh, subtitles on the screen, but you know, so you have problematic." people out in the world yeah. seeing movies yeah. but yeah that's whack man but, what can you do yeah. but do you so do you get big into the oscars um i used to be really big into the oscars yeah. and then so little by little i lost faith in the academy yeah <laughs> and so I, I i didn't watch it this year uh, yeah. but i read about it gotcha. um i know a lot of a lot of people who, who watch my channel were like hey you're gonna do a live stream about the oscars <laughs> i was like no yeah. you know i'm just gonna watch a, watch a movie or something right, you know, right. do something else because it just it, I wasn't feeling it and, something productive you know <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> so um yeah I didn't I didn't watch it this year but oh I did love uh, Joaquin Phoenix's uh, speech yeah that was majestic stuff <laughs> that was great um yeah man what, did you did you prefer Adam Driver or Joaquin Phoenix? I prefer Adam Driver. Yeah, I lean yeah, Adam too. <laughs> but that that was the the one thing I would say I have a very similar progression with the the Oscars as you just described, um, and the the only thing that was sort of like keeping me excited for for this year, especially after like Green Book won last year, and it's like ah, the oh, yeah. Academy is clearly yeah. like, uh, was the fact that like we were talking about before this year was so stacked. That I felt like, for the most part, everybody that won, I could be like, okay, this was a, a film I was rooting for, and yeah. and hopefully these awards lead more people to see it. That was like the one right. thing for me for this year. Yeah, for sure. I think that's one of those things where the the you know award shows, as much flack as they get, they're still immensely, um, uh, socially impactful. Right. Yes. Because. Even though, like, maybe they have like a dumbass winner or something, yeah. that winner is going to get so much more attention because right. it won, yeah. you know. And it's like, oh, so when people dismiss like award shows, like, totally, that makes total sense. Like, I do. Yeah. But you can't like negate the fact that they're super influential to so many people. And they're like, oh, you know, sometimes people just go and they're like, okay, what are the Oscar winners? And they have like lists on like streaming channels and they're like, oh, Oscar winning films and right. there's like all the all the movies and that's what you watch because oh they're supposedly good. And so you know when a movie doesn't get nominated, it's not like, oh well of course it's like the the award shows are dumb. Well yeah, but that means that less people are going to be exposed to these films. Right. And that's why one thing I love why Parasite won. But it also bums me out that so many other films didn't get nominated, especially um animated films didn't get nominated yeah. or didn't win. Yeah. 
For sure. Yeah, I, I know uh, a couple for me that were that were kind of upsetting were uh, uh, Lupita's performance in Us. I thought was very deserving of oh, of recognition. Yeah, and then a bunch from the Lighthouse in in acting categories, directing, screenplay, whatever. But but yeah, exactly like you're saying, like the the cultural impact of the Oscars still can't be denied. And I mean, I know Netflix like right away when the nominations came out, the poster for Marriage Story was so many times Academy Award nominated and now immediately <laughs> after it was like Academy Award winner Marriage yeah, Story it's yeah, like exactly, half the exactly. poster so yeah for sure Crazy. yeah so uh, before we wrap up just kind of getting back to, to you and your channel uh, mm -hmm. do you have any videos that are like favorites of yours that you've worked on I know like I'm sure uh, Back to Zootopia was probably a, a, a big one for you right mm. Mm, let me actually see because I'm gonna, I'm gonna like scroll through my channel now. <laughs> uh, that's a great question because I never think about that. What's yeah. interesting, and I don't know if other people do this, but what I do is that once I make a video, I kind of never watch it again. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's really weird sometimes. I mean, when it, like if I ever do rewatch one, I'm like, oh, you know, that's actually pretty good. Like I shouldn't <laughs> have been like so you know insecure about it. But um, right. you know, most of the time I don't because I just kind of want to push forward and not really look back too much um unless i'm like in a, one of those states where it's like oh everything's kind of like tanking let me see what i used to do so right, let me see if sure. i can like maybe bring yeah. that back or something um a video i like a lot well i like the diary of a wimpy kid series i'm yeah. starting um return to zootopia is easily obviously one of, holy sh you got nine hundred thousand. it's at nine hundred thousand already god damn uh, I'm shocked by that. Sorry, I just like got the news today. <laughs> um, Congratulations! Yeah, crazy because I spent like two and a half years of my life on that thing, so right. that's yeah. amazing. Um, the Your Name video was also really important to me because not only is it a video on Your Name and why I like it, but it's also kind of like a video that kind of it's like a tribute to me discovering anime essentially. Um, because at the time when I made this year name video, it's, it'd been like almost a year since I really got into anime or I think just a year at this point. And so I, I wanted to kind of make a video that kind of celebrated anime at the same time as I celebrated this one film. And so I think it's, it's probably one of my best videos, um, in my opinion. And, uh, man, there's so many, I've made so much crap. I need to relax. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I mean, there's a lot of videos, you know. Yeah, uh, it's, it's cool to to have stuff that to just be creating stuff that you're proud of. I think is is really nice. yeah for sure. I wouldn't like even sometimes I I start making videos, it barely happens because um just time. So I really have to streamline everything. And it's like oh this works, this doesn't. But one time, there's been a few times where I've been making a video and I'm like this is not good or I wouldn't be proud of this and I just scrap it. You know? Oh my god. The Adams Family video. I adore that video so much. That is funny. That movie That's a good is one. so bad, man. Yeah. yeah. Oh my god. It was. I was just because I watched it with my friend, and we have this thing where you know we in, we both enjoy film, so we barely talk during the film ever. <laughs> um, sometimes some sometimes we just kind of like look at each other and go like, ah, that's weird or yeah. that's funny or that was good, you know. And um, this film, we were just kind of like looking at each other like, what the fuck is that? Because we're both animation <laughs> students as well. Um, somehow, we're both animation students and we're both into film, which is great. Yeah. Um, and so we were just like not only looking at like the filmmaking, but also the animation side of things, which mm -hmm. is ridiculous because, you know, I rarely blame animators for anything. Like, sure. you know, Cats was terrible. Right, right, right. I would not really blame the VFX people, though, yeah. even though it looks whack. It's because the director wanted it that way, and yeah. he thought it was good, so he approved it, and it's all set, right? Yeah. But yeah. for this film, there is like, I mean, I don't know if the studio was small, but even then, at least make it like look competent half yeah, the time. Right. Like it was, to me, but... especially with an IP like Adam's Family, you would think that like yeah, yeah, be some sort of well, it was Illumination, right? That worked on it, or uh, it was Lionsgate. Oh no, no, I don't think it was Lionsgate. It was Metro Gold. Golden Mayor. Oh wow! The the lion. I have no idea. Actually, yeah, you know, you can't get a get me a rut there. I have no clue. But what what I think what frustrates me with Adam's family 
and it's you always at least to me i always think this is like would a senior thesis film that's really well done be better than this or at least better looking than this and if the answer is yes then you've really done messed up yeah. because if you're a movie <laughs> with like a huge budget and like two years to make or even one year yeah um and you can't make it as good as like a student film visually right. at least then like man you i don't know what you're doing man because <laughs> yeah that you know that's when you start getting into those mindsets um if i really really studied film went to a film college like extensively then i would probably be more aware of more film related things but i only have like a like a decent knowledge from reading and studying mm -hmm. but um and taking classes of course but you know i'm more animation oriented right and so that's when I watch animated films. I can really like look at it and be like, okay, yeah, that that makes no sense. Or why did they do yeah. that? Or why is it freaking like that? Or that looks amazing, you know? So it's it's one of those things, and I, and I think it's also a good thing because then you have a a variety of voices with a variety of, I guess, specialties on YouTube. Right. Um. But yeah. Oh, and another video I like, obviously the the trailer for Interstellar Ranger Commence, the series I'm making. Because of course I'm proud of that. Right. Yeah, definitely. And uh, yeah, I mean those are those are videos I enjoy. So your thesis film is that something that we're gonna see on the channel at some point? Um, the thesis film. What sucks is that for theses, if you do it at at a college, I don't think it's like kind of like um, with 2D animation because 2D animation you can just you know uh, get the program at home and you can do it at home. They're relatively cheaper. But 3D animation, it's like, whoa, okay, you have Maya, which is like, you know, we have the student version to buy it. It's like a lot of money, and yeah. then you need, like, uh, all these shaders. Then you need Houdini, which is another um, program. Then you need um, Nuke to composite everything. Um, you know, there's so many – Motion Builder, I think that's what it's called, and stuff like that. And so once that adds up, it's like, oh, crap, well, um, <laughs> that's a lot of money yeah. because that's when – it costs money to be able to produce things commercially mm -hmm. because you know it, if it was on brown table it'd have to be commercially um uh shown uh because i mean if i put it on brown table then it would it would essentially be monetized right, right. Um, i'm pretty sure i mean i don't have to but i think just i don't i just don't want to post it yeah um yeah. but you know, just uh, posting videos where you have um, student licenses and making money off them is illegal. Yeah. So don't want to do that. Yeah. No, <laughs> so it'll probably just be on the school's website next year because um, that's when it's due, 2021. Sure. And um, it's, it's also probably going to be in my what my portfolio, I guess, for my in my Vimeo. And um, oh, you know. The people I work with, uh, especially my manager who has now left, but he's still uh, my fr a friend of mine, he kept telling me, like, listen, you don't stop working. That's great. But, like, damn, dude. Like, <laughs> um, you are doing YouTube plus your own series mm -hmm. plus college plus thesis. You, you are not going to survive next year, which is 2021. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, yeah, man, you know. I'll just I'll wing it, man. I yeah. got it. But like that does I can't say it doesn't freak me out because even now there's a lot of work and like as soon as I I leave this, not that I want to rush to leave because um, this is really fun, but right. um, I'm immediately gonna start working yeah. on homework because yeah. that's that's the life, man. Yeah. So it's you know it's rough and you know when I get out of college and. It's one of those things where it's like, hey, what if I get a good job? What, do I stay with Roundtable? Do I mm -hmm. stay on this job? Right. Um, how how much did Roundtable grow from this year to the end of my college years? And like, does that mean that it's profitable and I can build this right. into like a business, or is it just going to be something that I do on the side after this? Um, I don't know. And it's always tough because what hurts is that if I don't follow Roundtable, then the likelihood of like another season of interstellar ranger commence again the the anime i'm working on or right. the animated series that's based on anime that i'm working on <laughs> is uh is less likely to happen right. and it's yeah. one of those things where it sucks because if, if you go into like the quote-unquote corporate machine mm -hmm. the 
time you have to work on things you you create or you genuinely 100% enjoy doing um, kind of goes down yeah. because from people I know, and you probably have teachers that have told you the same thing, it's that you know once you get into this point, now you're working on something that is someone else's vision, right. and it's less of like the vision that you're making, you know. So 100%, I firmly believe that if you have like a drive to do something or you have the ability to do something because not everyone has the ability to do things to just like make it right now because as as you get older man like things just get harder yeah you know and you have less time for things and what's great now is that we're young you know and if you're in high school and if someone's in high school listening to this thing you have so much time yeah. like do stuff you know, do it and like if you want to make a movie like make a movie if you want to make like a show make a show right. if you want to just like even you know scribble out like like a uh, storyboards and just post them online like people watch storyboards which yeah. is as ridiculous as it sounds it's true and people really enjoy them like um animatics that are just black and white drawings yeah. and you know, it's one of those things and you never know, like, hey, if you make something that good, you could also post it online and if it gets like a lot of reception or you can use that for your resume and if it gets a lot of reception from people, yeah. you know, it, you have to take advantage of all the opportunities you have because we're living in a time where there's just so much in your hands that you can just yeah, use. Yeah. Social media is a massive platform. and. Yeah. One time in my school, Brad Bird and Michael Giacchino came on. Whoa. And Brad Bird was like, all right, guys, listen. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah, it was, it, was, it was crazy to me. But he was like, guys, listen, you all have so much available to you now. Yeah. Like before, back in his time, like if you wanted to make a film, he couldn't. You had to like rent stuff out and it's cameras were massive. Right. But now you have like a camera on your phone. Right. Yeah. You know, and you can just start making things like immediately. And I think it's one of those things where you have all the opportunity and all that's left is like, do you want to do this thing? You know, and it's that push to, hey, you know, I am confident in my ability. I feel like I can do this thing that's when you start like working on your stuff but it's you know the the i guess the the work you have to put in to get to this point is uh it stumps a lot of people yeah and i totally get it because a lot of people are insecure like even i was insecure of course i'm still insecure like right. can i do this you know are people even gonna enjoy it are people gonna like it right. um is it something that you know i can do because you see so many people even just as, as examples like dropping out of college and then they get big, but there's only so few people that do that. Right. And not just that, there's only so few people that like make it, yeah. you know? And that I think is what freaks people out because it's true because you hear all these stories about people that drop out and then they become successful, but there's also a bunch of stories that you haven't heard right. of people dropping out from their jobs or college and ending up like, oh, I, I can do it, you know? And that's why it's always has to be at its own pace, but like do it now. But of course, you know, don't be like, oh, I'm gonna do it now. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a movie <laughs> and drop everything. everything. Yeah. No, yeah. you can't do that. But if you make a movie with the time you have and you see that it's getting like good reception, then that doesn't mean that it's like, oh, that was just one and off thing. Like, you can take that and like, <clears throat> sorry, and you can take that and make it into into something. You know. Um, and you know that's for me that's what i tried to do with my my youtube channel like it's not just oh i'm going to make videos and make money no it's i'm going to make videos but i also now because i made these videos i have a platform now i can use this platform to produce content that i have 100% originated by myself right and that's kind of like the mindset that people have to have if they want to succeed in every possible aspect not that I'm succeeding, but I'm saying that it's a it's a good thing to note that if something good happens, well, you can also maneuver that into something that you know can lead to other good things happening, and it it, it doesn't just have to end in like you know it things don't just have to end. You can also you know take advantage of things, and um, 
yeah, it's 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 always tough, man. And you never know how it's going to go. It's a roll of the dice, but yeah. that's why never bet on something. Always have a plan B, of course. Right. Right. Um, but yeah, just if you enjoy doing something, you got to do it because there's only so much time you have, and we have so much uh, so much at our disposal. That's right. like what sure. what is what's stopping us, you know? Yeah, yeah, definitely. That's beautiful advice. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, so I guess all right. Final questions here. What are your most mm-hmm. anticipated movies of 2020? Whew, uh, not Black Widow. Uh, <laughs> really? Uh, I feel like it has lost some yeah. steam. Yeah. I don't know. Who knows? Yeah, I think so too. Uh, there's this. Is this coming out next year? Wes Anderson's next film? The French yes. Dispatch? Yeah. The trailer yes. just dropped this morning. Did yeah, you see it? That's what I'm like. I haven't seen it yet, but I've seen uh, everyone freaking out about it. I'm doing yeah. this homework. But I'm so excited for more Wes Anderson, man. Yes, because yeah, absolutely. Uh, was it the uh, Isle of Dogs? Is that what his last one was? Mm, yeah. And that was great. Uh, I love his animated films, but I love it with with people too. You know, yeah. the Grand Budapest Hotel was fantastic to me. It's yeah. one of my one of my favorites, and um, very excited for that one. Yeah, hundred percent. I was definitely getting um, Grand Budapest vibes from the French Dispatch definitely. trailer. So. Yeah. Oh, that's great. That's yeah. great. I need to watch it like right now. Actually. Yeah. Check it out, man. <laughs> um, what what is this other film? I can't remember. Let me see one second. Uh, Tenet is also releasing. Um, I love Christopher Nolan, and. Uh, Dune yeah. is also released yeah. next year, yeah. and I'm very excited for that. Cause yeah. Denny, you know, <laughs> Nolan, my faves, they're my bays. Yeah. <laughs> um, isn't Edgar Wright working on a movie for next year? Yes. He is. Uh, Last night in Soho. Yeah. Oh right. Okay. I just that's started it. filming. That, I think. Yeah. Really? Cause that's what I was. I kept like putting in the back of my head like, always like next year in 2019. I was like next year, man. All these movies are gonna yeah. come out. And they're going to be like for my favorite directors, and it's like now happening, and it's like, oh my god, they're all yeah. happening this year. So it's um, it's amazing. Yeah, it's, but um, it's so cool coming from a year like like 2019 that had so many good movies to have so many movies from premier directors to to look forward to. Yeah, yeah, that's amazing. It's so great. And what's this other one? Oh, on on superhero levels, um, what is the movie called? Wonder Woman 80, 18, 19, Wonder Woman eighty four. Yeah. WW84, what it's called, <laughs> yes. Wonder Woman 84, uh, looks so fun. Yeah. Um, hopefully it's good. Maybe it could be bad, but it looks it looks very uh, fun, and it looks really fresh. It doesn't yeah. feel like a superhero film, which is something I, I I can always say as a positive for DC. Yeah, definitely. Good or bad, they don't feel like you know the same thing. Like it's kind of like eating M and M's. Yeah. And you're like, oh, this one has pretzel. This one has you know peanuts in it but it's still m&m you know right yeah. well and that's the great uh, thing so it's yeah, yeah. that's <laughs> the great thing about dc and like you mentioned yeah. it in your birds of prey video and it's that they're really going down this path now of really individual films like you get your joker and then you get birds of prey yeah so yeah, yeah I'm, I'm even higher on wonder woman 84 after birds of prey just because i'm so high yeah, on me too. dc because i love birds <laughs> of prey yeah me too man and um marvel i, I don't know what's really is Eternals releasing is that yes. is that the only movie that's coming out next year? Yeah, Eternals or and something Black else Widow. coming out. Well, Eternals and Black Widow, then there'll there'll be the the Disney Plus yeah. shows. So oh, oh right, so I'm hyped for the Disney Plus shows. Me yeah, too. me too. Uh, Black Widow, I'm not interested in, and Eternals. <laughs> it's not that I'm not interested; is that it hasn't in, impressed me yet. Right. And Eternals, it's not like I can be impressed because it hasn't really shown me anything. Right, so right. Uh, I'm waiting for anything about that, but. Yeah, I'm just I'm hyped for the Disney Plus shows, especially since it kind of sucks. I don't really like Disney Plus too much because mm. you know it's Disney, and I don't really want to give them too much money. But <laughs> yeah, um, one thing that's good, and that is if you have any like animation fans listening to this, it's that Disney Plus has a lot of old animated shows and movies, yeah. and it's a massive collection. I mean, and that even my is computer huge. animation, a hundred percent, yeah. And even my computer animation teacher was like, "Yo, if you guys like 2D animation." which led to 3D because he's a 3D animation teacher. He's like, right. you guys should watch this 100% because this is great stuff. He loves 101 Dalmatians. Like, he would yeah. probably, like, you know, he just <laughs> Niagara Falls over it. Like, <laughs> so sure. So, yeah, man. Um, yeah, I mean, those are that's what I'm excited for. Yeah. Um, oh, and uh, superhero films, Morbius. Yeah. yeah. Because I have no idea what is going on yeah. with that movie. <laughs> it could either be great or absolutely terrible, and I, I'm just excited to see which one it is, man. Yeah, yeah, for uh, sure. It looks so ridiculous. And um, Venom so Two just wrapped, right? So that'll be coming out also. Venom Two, two? Yeah. <laughs> no way. I'm pretty sure. How many? 
So there's like what, like five MCU movies coming out next year? Crazy. No, yeah. two, four, four, four MCU yeah, movies coming yeah, out next year. Yeah, they need to relax, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of movies. Damn. At the uh, so at the time of recording, um, Sonic premieres this weekend. Can we expect a video on it? You will probably expect a video. Um, <laughs> I'm, I think I might collaborate with this guy who's a Sonic channel, which is great because Ooh. that'll hopefully get me uh, some new followers. Sweet. But um, yeah, I just I like collaborating in general, but it has to be with people that I feel like could give a good balance to to my side as well. It can't mm -hmm. just be one side. Yeah. Right. And you know, unless I really respect the person or I really enjoy the person enjoy the person or i really i really like like the person as an individual or i like the people as individuals because um you know it's 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 tough because and it always sucks because i feel bad sometimes it's like people i don't know and they ask me stuff or um they they want me to do something or, or sometimes people dm me things and it's like i don't know you man or and it just kind of feels bad because i have things to do yeah right I can't really, you know, talk to everybody, you know, because I'm just one person, you know. Right. Yeah, if definitely. Roundtable was like people, then maybe they could probably respond to everyone, and it would be like a response dash, you know, the person answering. Right. right. It's just all me, so can't really happen. But uh, yeah, that's uh, yeah, that's what's going on these days. Cool. Well, hey, uh, thank you so much for doing this. This was really oh, awesome. Of course. Yeah. Absolutely. Of course. Yeah. Um, feel uh, really yeah, lucky really to have had you on. Yeah. Yeah, it was really fun to be here. I love podcasts. Um, <laughs> I just wish I had more time for them. Yeah. But um, if you have any other other questions, even weird questions, man, you can ask them. <laughs> awesome. Uh, for sure. Like I can I can still stay on for like ten minutes. Yeah. If you want, I really don't mind. But okay. I yeah. mean, we'll probably unless you want me to leave now. It's totally fine. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, not at all, man. If you have time, we have time. What time is it? It's uh, twelve o'clock. So, yeah, we're good. Um, I don't know. I mean, I guess there's stuff that doesn't necessarily have to get into the episode so i don't know um how how what's the process of like you did that big collaboration right with uh, you guys did the marvel series i think it was on youtube mm, yeah where, one marvelous scene yeah. yeah yeah one marvelous scene you came up with that idea right no that was nando v movies oh it was and, and you were a part the of one it. i did was star wars defined oh, that was the one i did yeah yeah, yeah. Because I thought those were Thanks so to Alchemax, who's my, my Discord moderator. Gotcha. He, he essentially uh, pitched me the idea, and I, I had to – I led with it because he doesn't obviously have the context. Um, but, yeah, Nando essentially created the One Marvelous Scene idea from um, essentially I getting the idea of making something like that from movies with Mikey doing Lessons Animation Taught Us. Mm hmm so he was like, what if we do that but for Marvel because Endgame's coming out? Um, which, by the way, Endgame should have been the last Marvel film for like the next three years and then start again. You think so? Uh, yeah. But that's just me. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, and that was really fun. And the whole process of that was uh, kind of like half winging it, half like getting a schedule down. Nando was totally on top of it. Um, most of the time, no, 100% of the time, what am I saying? I was the one that wasn't on top of it because I was like, oh, crap, I have to make a video. <laughs> and so um, we we all had like a like a spreadsheet of what movies we wanted to choose because, you know, we can't, um, we can't pick the same movie or if we do, we have to pick a different scene. So right. we all had to put down which scene we wanted to do so we don't have like copies of um, the scene we chose. And so... It was really fun to do, and the greatest part about it was, like, all these amazing content creators. I don't know if they like being called content creators. I'll just say YouTubers or <laughs> uh, video essayists. All these um, YouTubers, <laughs> whoa, um, on this one email. Um, and it's, like, all these amazing people that I would have never even, like, expected to be in this email. You know, like, oh, I now have your email. I'm not I'm, – maybe I'll – I'll email you for something creepy. I might not, <laughs> but you know, you have like people like lessons from the screenplay and Captain yeah. Midnight, yeah. and it's like wow, all these super high up people that are that just made it. You know, they're just they're just totally there, and so it was definitely one of those moments where 
um, I went to my friends and were like, yo, do you guys know Captain Midnight? You know Nando V movies? Yo, I'm, I'm in a collaboration with them. And they're like, who are you? Who, who is that? Because they, <laughs> they don't watch those videos. But um, I'm, I was always freaking out to anyone who would listen to me. Um, yeah. But yeah, it was it was great. And Star Wars is defined, uh, the one I had to do was also um, similar. Um, I feel like it had less reception, of course, because The Rise of Skywalker, nobody cares as much as Endgame. Um, but it was still a lot of fun to do, and it was really cool to really have to be responsible and on top of this thing. But it was hard. It was definitely hard, and it's definitely one of those things of, of like, man, I'm essentially contacting people with like triple the subscriber count that I have right. onto like getting on top of this thing. Like, I had to email people like, hey guys, we uh we have a month left, so right, <laughs> you know, right. get videos. <laughs> And so I, I don't know if they're like, oh, my God, this kid. Dude, I have triple your subscriber base. Don't, like, boss <laughs> me around. you know. So I'm always worried about that. Um, again, you know, everyone's insecure somehow, but you have right, to, like, yeah. get, you know. It's one of those things. Um, yeah. Oh, the Binary Sunset video is also one I'm pretty proud of. Yeah, because... I was going to say, that's one of my favorite videos of yours. Cause I love oh, yeah? The Last Jedi. So... So... <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah. Um, the... The video was half written with uh, Discord moderator Alchemax, the one that oh, okay. came up with the idea for Star Wars Defined. Yeah. And um, it was great because he came in with all this knowledge of Clone Wars and Rebels because mm. I haven't watched those shows. So right, right. We kind of meshed um, what we had together to create the video essay that is the, the Binary Sunset video essay. And I'm very happy it came out uh, great. I wanted to ask you, since this is not going to be in the episode, but um, like I have tried to go and like write my own video essays, edit them, and usually I do end up scrapping it. But mm -hmm. I wanted to ask you, how many times do you record and like start over or? Oh hate my it? god! Let me let me let me show you right now. This this is like what it sounds like. Okay, <laughs> I'm like <laughs> I'm like a, uh, how does how do I go? It's like a. Hey everybody, welcome back to Brown Table. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Go to Br Hey everybody, welcome back. It's it's exactly like that. And it right. always has to be this thing. And what's funny is that everything always ha and this is like for me at least, everything always has to sound cool. Yeah. Like nothing can just be like, you know. Um and so I think Birds of Prey was like a uh, really good and stuff, and so you know, you have all these uh characters and they're you know kicking ass and taking names and uh i really enjoyed that aspect you know and it yeah. can't just sound like that it has to be like and birds of prey was really cool and it had all <laughs> right, these characters right. kicking ass like there's like you have to like stop it's this weird way of speaking it's almost like a like a news reporter voice like you have to yeah. get in this tone and you have to like stop for impact like and i think this movie was great and he's right. just it's like well this pause you know i could just say and this movie was great no but i have to like pause it yeah. to kind of like make it like boom that's right it's great you know and uh it's weird i don't know why i do that but i just think it sounds cool no, maybe it, it sounds cringe it definitely no does sound cool though because like i think about like cosmonaut marcus and alex from high top and then you and like all of your deliveries i feel like are always on point and i'm listening and i'm like how do they do that like i it's amazing it's amazing <laughs> oh, so Here's the t thank you so much. Yeah. Um, here's the and it's, it's like amazing to me to be compared to those two amazing creators. They're so fantastic. Um, for me specifically, I do this thing where it's like every essay, unless sometimes, man, sometimes I honestly just don't have time and I just have to burst like running through it and yeah. I sometimes miss this. But you have to always make like a video almost like a film like you have to make it like the the plot starts which is essentially your thesis you have the rising action and then once you get to your climax which is like the main point of your video which is where all your arguments come together into this one massive like this movie is amazing or this movie is bad <laughs> and then you resolve it by saying like and that's why i think this movie is great and this movie is bad and why it would like tie back into like maybe you know other films or how this is influencing people or how it makes me feel um and a lot of the times i you know and it just comes naturally um it's not like i'm forcing it like oh and it made me feel cool because i like no because like you know <laughs> i'm not going to talk about things that i don't care about so obviously right. if i'm talking about it it's influenced me in some way and so sometimes i do talk about like and this movie like made me feel this way or 
I feel this way because this, and I think that's great. And <clears throat> when people listen to your opinions online, I think one of the takeaways is that, yeah, like it's your, hopefully it's your opinion. So, you know, I respect that. And if you talk about how you got to your point of view in a really substantial and meaningful way, people are more willing to accept it right. than just like, oh, that's dumb. Why would you think that? You know, right. like even if it's a prey, a lot of people are, I feel like maybe argumenting it, arguing, what am I saying? Arguing for the movie in the wrong way mm -hmm. because they start dismissing the opinions of other people and invalidating it. Right. And I think that's not the right way to do things. I think there's, of course, always certain people that are just like, wrong they're just wrong because they're they, their mindset is just either misogynist or yeah yeah cis, and you see this all the time yeah people are what are you talking about no they're not i'm like i'm not talking about you yeah. i'm talking about this yeah. other person you know? yeah. but you know sometimes people do have like legitimate criticism about something and you can't say oh no you're stupid like how can you not like birds of prey what i think is you have to you know if you want to get this other person to have the same opinion as you, then you have to formulate your own opinion better than this other person's right. and make them understand why you think this way. And honestly, at the end of the day, it's up to that person to think, oh, maybe maybe you're right. Because everyone has different opinions and you can't really change that too much. Yeah. Um, but I think, yeah, at the end of the day, one of the goals is to maybe help the audience gain a new perspective for something or right. to reinforce why something is viewed this way um hence like oh a negative video like cats because cats is just ridiculous or a positive <laughs> video very like wimpy kid because this movie it may genuinely be good who knows man maybe it's actually good and i give reasons as to why i think that right um yeah it's one of those things you know um if you you know and this is something i learned in one of my class I can't remember. It's like metaphors or something, mm -hmm. but it's like um, the the human mind is basically always engaged to think things in metaphorical ways. Like time is money. That's like a metaphor. And if we consider that, then it's like, oh, time is money. We're gonna waste time. I'm wasting time, or I'm gonna gain some time by you know doing this or putting this off. You know, mm -hmm. it doesn't have to be that way. Maybe we can change it to something else. And if we go to the argument is war thing, then we're literally attacking the other person's position right. yeah. or defending our position you know and it's one of those things like what if we change argument is like a dance yeah. and so it's something much more collaborative you yeah. know and it's i guess in a way it's how you present your argument and what you're trying to get out of it and um that, that just always really stuck with me because it's like so interesting to think like even though we have different opinions we don't have to and you know we argue when we argue, it doesn't have to be something as malicious as like war. Right. It can be something collaborative, you know? Yeah. yeah. And I think that's really important. I think a lot of people miss that because even if we have like a lot of differing opinions and some people online are way more critical about things than others, right, right. don't have to attack the other person. I mean, unless they're just absolutely insane right. or, you know, like I'm saying racist or misogynist, right, right, right. Yeah. you don't have to attack the other person if they have a differing opinion than you yeah. you can also just put out your opinion and discuss you know and it can be like a dance it doesn't yeah. have to be a battle yeah that's, that's how think, film titter should be you yeah know? <laughs> i think that was something that was so disheartening about when last jedi first came out yeah. um mm. because I, I think that there's we both love last jedi yeah. um and i, I was always so right. upset I like go, going online and seeing people just being like completely dismissive of that perspective especially early now like the perspective of last jedi i feel like has kind of shifted and there are more and more voices saying no i love it it's a masterpiece that thing but like 100 percent, I, I love it so much yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah me too it's, it's my favorite star wars um mm. and there were so many people online like right after it came out just sort of like not giving reasons but trying to make you feel like an idiot for liking it yeah. um yeah. so so i remember like watching it loving it thinking that everybody's gonna love it and then getting on twitter and seeing all these people like hating it saying they ruined luke this that i'm like and i was like am i wrong like what so I, then i watched it again yeah. and i was like no 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 i still love it so it, it's 
like you're saying, like I would much rather it be like, well, this is how I view Luke Skywalker as a character, and this is why I didn't like it. And then you can counter that with saying that you feel like it was consistent with everything we know about Luke and, and that it was really a fresh perspective and things. Mm -hmm. So it definitely, th I would love to see film discourse shift to that more positive way because I think that way you get a lot of really interesting perspectives and different ways of looking at movies you might have only looked at in one way for your entire life. Yeah. I 100% agree with you. That's mm -hmm. that's that's essentially it, man. Like we I that's that's like the one thing that always frustrates me and again unless you have like a definitive reason why the other person is just going to be wrong mm -hmm. because of maybe their worldview or their biases or right. you know something we don't have to like attack the other person's opinion like it's just it's not no we, we can attack the other person's opinion i'm sorry um we can go against the other person's opinion and like try to formulate our own opinion based on what their opinion is but we don't have to attack the person right right that's what's so important and it's like because if you dismiss a person as like dumb and i see this a lot of times happening um then like why <laughs> why would people give you any Validity, you know, mm -hmm. it's like if you're just gonna dismiss me for my opinion, then like, why don't I dismiss you for your opinion? Ah, <laughs> right, you know? right. So, you know, um, it's always a struggle because you always kind of have this feeling like, yeah, I'm right, because in, at the end of the day, we're just people. Yeah. But you, you know, we always have to try to understand other people's mindset is not the same as ours, and um, it's it's always hard, man. It's 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 always yeah. it's always one of those things because I guess we're just humans are like that we're combative we're combative creatures essentially i mean i mean come on how what's going on in the world right now yeah <laughs> yeah so, yeah um, especially with the internet i yeah. feel like rewards hyperbole so much yeah. like like i oh, know sure. that that rant about parasite being a, a foreign film that shouldn't have one best picture went viral and it's kind of like people are offering commentary on the fact that like early internet and when people first started sharing videos like that that was the kind of thing that got rewarded um mm. rants and anger and explosiveness versus like real like creative criticism Nuance. and stuff yeah so I, I think that we're shifting hopefully shifting towards more substantive um analysis especially with channels like yours yeah. and uh like like you had mentioned movies with mikey before is is one of my favorite creators I think yeah, he's really, fantastic, man. Yeah, so mm. like, th I think things like that are are hopefully going to take over the internet as we progress. That <laughs> so it's not too. just like a screaming yeah. fest all the time. Yeah, because screaming is fun once in a while, but yeah, I, I don't yeah. know how people can constantly oh, listen yeah. to screaming. Yeah. I guess. But, um, I think was, what was I gonna say? Oh man, <laughs> it was it was something about like the person dissing Parasite. Mm -hmm. And he was all like, oh, this, this movie sucks. I can't remember what I was going to say. Man. <laughs> well, it reminded Doesn't me matter. of that I'm same. Sorry, it reminded me of that same guy who's kind of, he's gone a little semi-viral, at least in film Twitter recently, uh, with his, his comments on uh, Birds of Prey. I don't know if you guys have seen it, but mm -hmm. I've seen him a couple times now. People are quoting the tweet and saying, like, this guy's ridiculous, but. You know, he's being mm. obviously very misogynistic and sexist in the, in the video. Yeah. Talking oh, of... yes, th yeah, that's what I was meaning. Like, yeah, when w when people are truly, you know, able to be essentially clowned on by the internet is when people genuinely do things like that. Right. Like mm -hmm. when they out themselves as like, oh, this person is totally, totally racist right now. Right. <laughs> he's totally right. being a hundred percent racist right now. Yeah. Like that's when you can clown on someone because yeah. that's not an opinion, that's like an attitude someone has. Yeah. Um, yeah. In, I guess in like psychology, it's like people can either have opinions which can be changed or they can have attitudes. Right. And attitudes are something that has like a preconceived like bias yeah. already set on you yeah. that is much harder to change. And these attitudes can be negative, you know? And so mm -hmm. when someone has that attitude, and if it's like a really negative attitude, like, oh, he is 100% racist, he's 100% right. misogynistic, then, yeah, of course he can be clowned on because yeah. that's not good. You mm -hmm. shouldn't be that. <laughs> so um, that's why you see so many people dunking on this person. Yeah. Um, I mean, even sometimes I notice like some people are that, but they masquerade it and they hide it. And right. they're like, oh, what are you talking about? I'm just going by facts, man. Yeah, and it's like, yeah. oh, sure, dude, sure. But, 
you know, hopefully at the end of the day, everyone gets revealed for who they are, right. essentially. And um, I just hope that, you know, nuance and uh, just general positive discussion that leads to amicable understanding of different people's opinions, I just hope that happens and that wins out at the end of the day. Yeah. Well, um, all right, I'm going to go back to when we kind of like stopped the conversation and got into this one. And mm-hmm. I'll kind of I'll fade it into this closing here. Yeah. Because we'll do a closing for the episode. Um, gotcha. All right. So, well, that wraps up another episode of Chatting Cinema. Mauricio, thank you so much yeah. for coming on. Very yeah. Thank you guys for letting me on. This is great. This is really fun. Yeah. Yeah. And it's so nice actually to have like to see the people that I'm talking to. I know you don't see me. I'm so sorry. It's but, okay. Yeah, no <laughs> I look terrible right now, but um, <laughs> um, it's always it's always much much better than staring at like a like a logo um but it's not that i mind it's just it's it's really cool to really see who i'm talking to so yeah, that's yeah. great yeah and uh yeah again thank you for having me on this was really fun yeah really appreciate it i think that was a great conversation yeah very happy yeah hopefully you'll come on again someday we'll see yeah, <laughs> yeah sure cool. thank you guys so much yeah. thank you uh, oh you can uh, check me out obviously yeah youtube roundtable roundtable underscore ent on twitter and uh irc underscore anime on twitter as well for the anime i'm working on that's pretty much all I have to plug. <laughs> all right. Well, we'll catch you guys next time.